Good morning, guys. Welcome back. It's a beautiful morning out here amongst the trees in the red pine forest. And one of my favorite uh, times of the year when there's not too much snow is right now. Nice and crisp and clear and well cold and you can work without sweating and there's no bugs. It's a beautiful time of year out here. However, it's not a beautiful time of year if you do what I do and you leave too much slab wood or waste wood from the sawmill to pile up. I left it here and it was in a neater pile, but it then got covered by a whole bunch of snow and then it froze to the ground. In the last few days, we had some temperatures that were above freezing, which is a bit uncharacteristic at this time of year. So I took advantage of that and I came out and broke this pile of slab wood up with my forks. But that leaves what you see in front of you. I have great intentions sometimes on what I'm going to do with the slab wood. Sometimes I think I'm going to make firewood with it. Other times I think I'm going to put it on trails in low spots. Other times I just don't get to any of those. That's the case right here. I'm going to do something with it, however, today. I'm going to take this slab wood and I'm going to run it through my wood chipper. This is one of the things I sometimes do because this allows me to get rid of the waste wood and also create a product that's useful. This right here, the Woodland Mills WC68, I've been running this thing for years now. This is hooked up to the back of my tractor. My tractor is a Coyote, a 40 horse tractor at the engine, right around 32 horsepower at the PTO. Uh, this thing works pretty good. It's got a hydraulic infeed, so it's going to pull the wood into it. And obviously the chips will come out the chute here. We're going to put this back into action. We're going to chip up as much wood as we can. Now, some of the pieces in here I'm noticing are probably going to be a bit too wide. This is going to be very, very close, but we'll see what we can do. The opening down here, if we dive in here, and it's a little dirty because this thing's well used. The opening in there is 8 inches wide and 6 inches tall. So you can fit an 8 inch wide piece, 6 inch tall piece. If it gets any wider than that, don't try to force it. I have tried, and it gets jammed in there solid, and you end up cursing yourself because you should have listened to the uh, dimensions on the uh, manufacturer's website. Anyways, eight inches wide is what we're going for. Most of this will fit in there, some will not. If it doesn't, you could always split it up with an ax or maybe even cut it down the middle on the, on the sawmill, but we'll see what we get up to. Anyways, that's what we're up against today. As I said, it's a beautiful day out here. I've got some hot sludge inside the tractor. So I think uh, we're on the up and up. Here we go. Alright, so I'm in neutral and down here is my PTO switch. I'm going to leave it in manual mode and then I hit this button and the PTO comes on. So the PTO's on. If we have a look up there, you can see on the dash that tells me it's on. I will rev it up to 540 RPM. I generally come back here and just have a look and make sure things look like they are supposed to. Uh, one thing I am noticing here, I normally have a little chain that attaches to that plastic cover. That makes it so that plastic cover doesn't spin. Uh, I don't know where that went, but that's normally on there. Now we'll rev her up to 540, which is that orange mark on the dash. See that whipping now, that's one place you stay back from, that's for sure. All right, let's get her going.
we took care of that big pile and it certainly is a lot more manageable now when you get a pile like that if you leave it like i did it freezes and well you're not going to be able to get around to it until the spring unless you got a big machine that can break it i dug my forks in there when it was frozen and it didn't want to lift anything i had to wait till it got a bit warmer but we took care of it now i'm going to come through with the bucket on the tractor the bucket's just up the trail there we'll clear this out so that it's wide open and then we will be back in business now originally what i had was i had that slab rack the waste wood rack see that thing in the back and behind this shed it looks like some uh two by fours and x patterns that was my slab rack that used to sit at this end of the sawmill uh, i broke that by accident when i tried to lift it when it was full with the tractor the tractor had no problem lifting it but the wood didn't want to cooperate so i got to come up with a better solution if i keep throwing the slab wood like i did there well one of these times it's going to bite me and it'll be staying there right till spring anyways if you guys have any bright ideas for me i'd be happy to hear how i can deal with the slab wood right at this point uh, obviously it's going to snow and so we got to have somewhere somewhere that i can put the slabs that's either out of the way i leave till spring or is accessible but not in the way that makes sense looking at the chips here you guys can see what the consistency of them are there it is right there kind of nice actually they're they're pretty coarse and so i use this stuff for all kinds of stuff you probably saw me down here playing around in the muck i might end up just pushing it in there after we move the snow out of the way but uh, provides for some great uh, great uses the chipper here this uh, particular model is right in the middle of the the woodland mills models of chippers i think they have one smaller one bigger this one performs very well. It's a direct uh, hookup. So basically it goes directly from the PTO on the tractor through the PTO shaft right into the flywheel. The flywheel is contained in this housing here. So it's a direct uh, direct drive, if you will, no belts, which is the case with some of the, uh, the other models like the WC88. And one last thing with this chipper, just in case you're not familiar with how uh, chippers like this work, uh, this particular model has a hydraulic end feed. And so on the very bottom of the chipper, there's this thing right here. That's a hydraulic fluid tank. Uh, right here, you have the motor that drives a wheel. You guys would have seen the wheel in here. We flip it up. You see it down there. It's got teeth on it. So that motor drives that wheel. And then uh, we have an, a, a speed adjustment or infeed adjustment speed right there. I just leave it on 10 all the time. So it's at maximum infeed. Uh, aside from that, way down below here, the only belt you're going to see uh, is right here. So this belt obviously is powered off the PTO shaft on the tractor. It comes down and you may not be able to see it. You'll have to take my word, but down there, there's a hydraulic pump. That's what's uh, taking the fluid from the, from the tank there and moving this motor. So that's the whole setup. This right here is a safety lever or safety handle. And so there's three positions. When you pull it out, that means wood will pull in. If you push it like that, as if you accidentally bumped it or fell into it, then what happens is that infeed roller uh, comes out. So instead of pulling in, it'll push out. And then in the middle uh, is the neutral where that wheel's not spinning.
All right, guys, we took care of a job here today that I didn't think we were going to get to until spring. This pile of slab wood is something you want to avoid. If you let it get too far gone, which mine was, you may not get as lucky as me in which you'll uh, end up having to leave it there till spring because it's frozen. We got it taken care of, fortunately. I'm not throwing slabs there again. I'm thinking, and I'm just thinking, that maybe I'll use, you guys see that right there, that green crate, green uh, cage there? That's from my original HM130 back in 2017. Back here is from my HM130 Max. Maybe I'll use that because I can pick it up with the forks. Maybe I'll take out some bars. Maybe I'll throw all the slabs in there. And then if I need to move the slabs before I process them, I'll just pick it up with my forks. Maybe I'll do that. I got two of those crates. Anyways, I'm just scratching my brain out loud here. If you guys have ideas for me, please let me know. Aside from that, the chipper did real well today. This chipper I don't use every day, but when I do need it, like after a big storm with all the brush that's fallen or for chipping up slab wood, it's very handy. So that's gonna go back and uh, await uh, my next project. As for the tractor, if I didn't have it, I don't know what I would do. I use it for everything. I might just trade in the car and drive the tractor to town from now on. It's, uh, it's quite the tool. Anyways, one last thing for you guys. I know many of you have been asking me about uh, what I'm going to do with this Hillbilly Hideout 2.0 or the shed right here. Whether I'm going to continue just stacking lumber in here or whether I'm going to move that sawmill up here. I'm not sure. I've been reading all your comments, getting your ideas. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. There is one thing I am sure of though. The idea of using my forks on my tractor to lift my sawmill and put it up there, I don't think it's going to work. There's a lot of weight right here in the saw head. I would have to have this somewhere in the middle in order to balance the weight. And then I have nowhere for the forks to go. Also, I would only be able to get my forks about this far because the top part of the forks stick up. The forks would then only extend to about here. So that's probably not going to work. Doesn't mean I can't get that up there. Nope. It just means I would probably have to go to option number two, which would be some ramps. Now that I look at it, I don't know if that'd be that difficult. Anyway, stay tuned. That, uh, that's that got to gotta have some more thought put into it. Aside from that, though, I do have some stuff coming that's going to be a, a very good upgrade for my Woodland Mills HM130 Max. Make sure you guys come back for that uh, real soon. In the meantime, guys, I appreciate all your support. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to get out here in the woods as often as I do. So I genuinely appreciate that support. Maybe if you guys could do me that favor, give her the old like a roof, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you next time.